So Paulo Nagamura joins us now. Paulo, thank you so much for coming on the show. It seems like a blink of the eye. Here we are. We're only a, about two weeks, a little more than two weeks away from the opening game in Major League Soccer. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, it was a pleasure to be part of your show. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about uh, Arizona and, and kind of what you as a manager saw out there and uh, you and your staff and kind of how you're feeling about the trip. It was a pretty quick one. Yeah, very positive trip. I think nine days in Tucson, uh, very, very positive. Three games, uh, a lot to take from this nine days. Um, very positive. I think uh, players understand what we're trying to accomplish and we try to implement. As I said before, a uh, very good group of individuals and and we, we, we believe there's a very good energy within the group. So very, very positive. Um, positive results also on the field against... Uh, MLS teams, but this is preseason. We just gotta keep keep evolving, keep keep getting better, and and I think the the ship is going in the right direction. Paulo, let's talk a little bit about the clarity of of a playing style, and and I know it's tough for you. Again, I wanna I wanna mention that you know you're still putting a roster together. You still have potential signings. There's all kinds of things going on, but you do come from Sporting Kansas City, so naturally. People are saying, hey, it's going to look a little bit. There might be some things from sporting here in a 4-3-3. Maybe talk a little bit about what, a little deeper, if you can, about what that playing style and, and, and what this system can look like to the Dynamo fan. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the system can vary. I think the way that, that I see the game, it's not a 4-3-3. Uh, defined by any any means. I think those those are just numbers. I think the team is gonna look a lot different on, on different on different game days. We can come with three. We can come with four in the middle. Uh, it, it can vary. It can vary a lot. So, but I I think the most important part that, that is to mention is that we're gonna we're gonna be a team that's gonna play with the ball. That's 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 how I believe I and how I see the game and that's how I think it's gonna fit fit best. Uh, for a team that plays in a climate that we have in Houston and in the environment that we want to uh, create here at PNC Stadium. How important, you know, with all your experience as a player in MLS and, and coaching at Sporting 2 and, and, and seeing these games, how important is it to be flexible with your tactics like you just mentioned in this league? Absolutely. very. I think you, you must be open for it because... Uh, different teams will, will, will give you different uh, different different uh, views, different uh, scenarios, and we we have to be able to adapt to those to those to those teams, not changing the way that we see the game. I think uh, we had this; it was very clear on on the two games that we played, Salt Lake and Colorado, two different teams, two quality teams that we had to approach different throughout the game, and and I think that's that's part of it, and. I think this is, uh, if you want to be successful, we have to be able to adapt and do well uh, playing different different kind of styles. Are things with your roster beginning to crystallize a little bit more with time and with some of these preseason games that, that things seem to be getting a little clearer to you as to maybe what the basis of your starting lineup may look like with the current roster? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, this three, three weeks into the preseason, I think we have a, a good idea on who can play where, who can uh, uh, go with uh, in terms of matchup, in terms of partnerships and midfield trio. And uh, I think uh, it's been great three weeks. I think we were able to assess a lot of as, as well the young guys and and the players that we have in current squad. And and I think, again, we, we're in a good point and we just got to keep moving forward. Now, you spoke with me and you were very candid that you had some potential signings that were accelerated in their talks. I'm assuming one of these might be a midfielder. And if I'm wrong, correct me. But um, how are those going? And, uh, you know, I, it's like we're getting a, a, the temperature every couple of days. But I know fans want to hear this stuff. No, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather not share positions or 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 any details on those players, but it's coming, it's coming along. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it's so, sooner than later. Uh, but again, we, we are in, we make sure that we are in the, the right pieces uh, and the right, the, the right personnel for, for what we're trying to accomplish here with, within the club.
Houston Dynamo head coach Paulo Nagamura. We're uh, grateful for him being on Soccer Matters ESPN 97.5 presented by the Daspit Law Firm tonight. Uh, if you play in a three set in midfield, what does it look like to you? And, and maybe you take people into how it can change, maybe playing with a single pivot, a double, and, and what you can do amongst those three guys to make it different on a different day, maybe against a different opponent. Yeah, absolutely. Just like we talk about it, it's going to depend on the day. It's going to depend on how we how we playing against. But it can look like one and two. It can look like two and one. It, look, it can look like a line of four. It, 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 it will vary. It will vary. So hopefully the, the, the players understand. But uh, that will, that will uh, I think, open a lot of opportunities for players in the roster to play and, and gain playing minutes. And that's why we, we, we really value the competi competition within the squad because I think everyone, every really, every single player in the squad has a chance to to make a good impact in a, in our team. Paulo, you you're not only integrating your players and and working on the, but you're also integrating your staff. And I mean, you got a lot of heavy hitters on the staff with great backgrounds, uh, great experiences, very knowledgeable. How's kind of the staff camaraderie and all that growing? Because it's been put pretty quickly together here. Absolutely, and look, they're 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 helping big time. I think uh, the, one of the reasons why we're we're achieving uh, some good results early on is because the work of Jimmy Nielsen, the work of Chris Martinez, the work of Zach Thornton, not only those three guys, Paul Caffrey, all the entire staff have been working tireless to to put this team in the right track. So uh, kudos to our staff as well, who's been doing very very good job with with this three weeks into the preseason. What's been nice and refreshing about you, you seem very aware of getting this turned around and very aware of, of how down the club has been for, for a lot of years now. And it's refreshing to see you take it so seriously about turning this around. And that's not to say people in the past haven't taken it serious, but do, do you feel a little extra incentive because of, or maybe anxiousness because of that, you know, because we're in such a great soccer market in America, we know this place is full of soccer fans, both at the youth level and the adult level. Um, do you feel that? I feel, I feel it's a big responsibility for sure. Uh, but I, I think we are so concentrated and so into it uh, that it's, it's just extra motivation for all of us. I think everyone in the club wants this team to be successful. I think it's very clear, it's very transparent, and it's very, you can see from players, staff, from, from the managers, from owners, that uh, we all want this to work. And again, I'm going to go back to what I say in the press conference, and I've been saying that on a daily basis, that will only change when we start getting results on the field. So that's what we work, we're working towards. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the game against Colorado and... and uh some of the, uh, the good work that occurred there and, and also uh, the game against RSL. Um, let's talk a little bit about Aldoberto uh, Carasquia. He certainly seems very motivated since coming back. I mean, he's got a lot of reasons to be motivated, right? Panama potentially going to a World Cup. But uh, what have you thought of him? Because I remember you hadn't seen him quite as much and, and getting to know him now. Yeah, Coco came on on the second game. Did really well in the second half against Colorado. Uh, I talked with him. He's he's very motivated for this year. Uh, he knows it's a big year for him uh, as well. For not only in terms of here with the club, but also with Panama and World Cup and and World Cup. So it's uh, I th I thought he showed really well against Colorado. What's a, it's it's a great sign. Uh, and also it's good that he's fully fit. He's ninety minute fit. So we just now he. Got to keep working with him in terms of how we want to how we want to play, how we want to defend, how we want to approach the game because he missed the first two weeks. So, but I'm I'm pleased with his last few days in Tucson, and we just got to keep pushing him. Do you see him more as an attack-minded player? Uh, I mean, uh, I think that's kind of what we see. Maybe an eight. I mean, where do you see him? Because I know he's capable of different roles, and he was used in different roles last year. I think he, he, because of his quality, he's a very complete midfielder. I think he can play deep. He can play higher. Uh, I think he can connect the game. He can score like he did against Colorado. Good shot from outside of, of the box. So 
very complete midfielder that can play multiple positions. And uh, we're just, again, we're just trying to assess uh, where he fits best so we can get the most out of him. Sebas Ferreira uh, really looked like a polished, uh, kind of more mature than he is at 23, kind of center forward, had a couple of really bright moments. Yeah, Seba, Seba came in. I mean, he's not he's not 90 minute fit. Yeah, I think we'll get there with the, the last two, three weeks of preseason. But that's what he brings, right? He brings he brings a finishing touch, uh, scoring goals. Score again yesterday on uh, on uh, on uh, the scrimmage against Phoenix that we played. So that's what he's gonna bring. He's gonna be danger around the box, and that's exactly uh, the kind of player that we need for that position. All right. So obviously, when it, when younger players get an opportunity, um, uh, people will talk, especially if one of them scores a goal and and looks energetic and, and a great possibility for the future. How about some thoughts on Andre Gattau and and, and kind of is that to accelerate his development process? Do you actually think he can get minutes this year? Maybe you can set that straight with the fan base and me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's what we assessing right now, right? We 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 need players in a first team roster that can that can help the first team win games, and that's that's what we assessing, Andre. And let's remember, he is a 15 year old. Uh, yeah. He's 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 done really really well in preseason. So we patiently assess him. We we don't want to hurry the decision. We want to make sure that we take this very seriously and very carefully. So we're not. Uh, messing with the with the kid's head because I think it's a lot to take from from a from a 15 year old so but at the end of the day we are assessing who are the best players that can help us win games on the weekends and for sure Andre has shown well and 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 put a good show on the on the on the 10 days in Tucson and and we will we'll soon make a decision if if he's the if he's the kid that can help us or we will just keep developing so but the kid has a has a very bright future Brooklyn, who you guys acquired and, and, and made an effort to acquire um, from outside the Dynamo Academy. Speak a little bit about him. He's getting a tremendous amount of publicity. Do you ever worry that you got to be careful and overhyping him to everybody? Of course, we all need to be very excited uh, about this move, the effort made by the Dynamo, him wanting to come here. But on the other hand, you know, I, I'll be completely honest here. No. That's a stupid thing to say, because I have been honest. Let me be up front here. That's the better word. I thought over the years, Memo Rodriguez was highly overexposed. And I don't think that helped him in his early years in player development. I don't know if you agree or disagree, but is that an area that you have to be concerned about? Because this is a very young man with a lot of talent. Absolutely. And look, uh, maybe if we had the second team when Memo was around, uh, maybe like what you said, Memo wasn't that exposed, right? So yes, I think there's going to be a process. I think the club is better structured right now where we can really focus uh, and we have the right people on the club that can really focus on those uh, young guys that are coming in uh, to our club. So uh, it's if it is, even if it's Brooklyn, if it is Andre or any other guy in the club, I think we're going to have a department that is going to look to take care of that part, and it, it, it's their their job on daily basis. Make sure that uh, the players, the young players, are getting what they need uh, in order to succeed future with the with the Houston Dynamo. Talking to head coach of the Dynamo, Paulo Nagamura. So that under twenty three team, which I mean, you know, Sporting Kansas City too so well. The vital nature of it, how important it is, how it affects the first team. You know things that other people don't know. Um, if there was no second team here, would you, you know, and it was still in the Rio Grande Valley, would you have taken this job? Because that's a big piece that, that you need. Uh, I would still take the job, Glenn, but I would definitely uh, vote for, for a second team within the club. I think yeah. it's necessary. I think it's, it's great that our second team is in-house, is next door. There's coaches that we in consistent communication and talks. So I think that's definitely uh, a step in the right direction of Houston Diamond, having a second team that is, is right next door. Yeah, I think it's exciting. And um, I, I'm assuming you, you're going to attend a lot of those games and Asher Mendelssohn and um, Ke Kenny Bundy running the team, Paul Holliker. I'm sure, you know, uh, those kids are going to see you guys all sitting in the stands, right? I mean, that's that makes a big difference. 
yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Again, we have a, a bigger, a bigger uh, objective here that is is make sure that the first team, it's a winning winning team at the end of the day. But for sure, uh, this is definitely something that we are we have uh, learned from working with the second team is that we need to be present. We need to be in 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 a close proximity to to the staff and to the players, so they feel that they they are they are part of all this as well, and they have a chance to to be part of the first team in the future. Exciting stuff. He's the head coach of the Houston Dynamo, Paulo Nagamura. Uh, I saw teenage uh, Hidebi posted. He was going somewhere, Qatar or something, and of course he played in the African Cup of Nations. What's the plan for him? And um, I mean, is he somebody you want on the field uh, opening day uh, against Real Salt Lake? Yeah, I mean, look, teenage had a, a few setbacks to come into the country, but uh, hopefully by by tomorrow he sh we should be clear. Uh, but yes, I'm excited to have teenage in in in, in camp with us. Uh, he he, will, I think he will bring a lot to to the to the table as well. And we just need to assess where he stands right now. I know he played a couple of games with the Nations Cup, but he he had to stay a few days extra in Africa in Zimbabwe on his hometown. Uh, so we, we need to talk, we need to assess and see where he stands now, but we'll make sure that he'll get the best treatment and best uh, training uh, in order to have him uh, ready, ready to go when, when we go for the home opener. Head coach Paulo Nagamura, Houston Dynamo. We appreciate how candid you are because uh, the fans absolutely love this uh, from you, the manager in, in your role. Um, we've seen Derek Jones in preseason playing as a center back. Is that where you're potentially looking at him for the future or is he still in contention as a holding midfielder or we're experimenting? I think, I think one of the things that I really like about players is to have versatility and play multiple positions. And I think Derek brings that. I think he can play the six. I do believe he can play the center back. He's done well in the, in the, in the two games that he played. And we just got to keep evolving. This is not, again, it's, it's a process. When you change kind of, you change positions of a player, he needs to, he needs to have training sessions. He needs to co be coached up. He needs to watch video. He needs to see what he's doing well, he's not doing well. And, and the future will tell if he can adapt well for that position. And if he can, for me, for sure, he has the tools to do it. It's, 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 it's going to be in terms of if he can perform on a high level in that position as well. But definitely, I love his versatility, and I think he will be a, a, a very use, a key part of this, this, this roster. Paulo, I had the enjoyment of watching you play as a player, and I know the type of competitor you were, the quality of player, the fieriness that you brought. Absolutely love all that. And when you talk about a Derek Jones or others on the team, um, when you look at them and when you talk to them, uh, is there a lot that has to improve in order for them to play more and, and to take this club to the next level? In other words, um, are there guys that you go, look, they got raw material, but they are going to have to accelerate their development or it's going to be a problem? Yeah, I think, look, I think it, it's, it's a fair question. And I think it's really important that you put out that I think, uh, the way that I like to do with the daily basis, daily basis with the players is to be transparent. And if they don't have the requirements that we that we want them to have on those positions, we let them know so they they can also work on it. I think it's about transparency. I think it's about being honest with with the coaching staff with the players as well, so they know and they know what to expect when they play certain positions. So I think I think we've done a, a good job with that in starting the in the first three weeks. Not only B, but Jimmy Newsom, Chris Martinez, and Zach Thornton, in 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 relay to the players what are the expectations on on every position and what we're looking to improve on each player. So uh, it's a, again, it's a process. It's twenty plus players in a roster, so we'll make sure that everyone is being treated equally and and with chances to to be big part of this team. Last one before we let you go, Paulo. Uh, Austin FC this weekend. This is going to be nice for you and your players to get in front of some fans here. Um, you know, what What do you want out of the 90 minutes in this game? I want consistency from what we've, show, we've been showing uh, in Tucson. I think that's the key right now. I think understanding what, the way that we want to approach the game, I think we're in a good position. I think it's just a matter of 
consistent doing throughout the time that we can do uh, in, in related to the fitness, the, the level of fitness that we are right now. So again, another another great game, MLS opponent, uh, and we're looking forward to uh, to to meet our fans and, and have a, a good showing on Saturday. Paulo, as always, thank you very much. We appreciate your candidness, your openness. You really take us into uh, what it's like to be a professional soccer coach and and preseason with the Houston Dynamo. We're pulling for you, and we will see you on Saturday. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Sounds good, Glenn. Thank you very much. See you Saturday. All right. That's Paulo Nagamore, the head coach of the Houston Dynamo. By the way, that game is going to stream at 6 o'clock, Houston Dynamo FC. Dot com. This interview brought to you by John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm. Great stuff there from the Dynamo manager. We'll take a break. We got more to come.